In this chapter, we will be studying the derivative rules. In this lesson, we will be looking specifically at the quotient rule. All right, hi everybody. Now today we're going to take a look at the quotient rule. Okay, so in another lesson we looked at the product rule, so how we take the derivative when we've got two functions multiplied together. Now we're going to take a look at the quotient rule. What happens when we take the derivative of the quotient of two functions? So here we go. So if f and g are both differentiable, so individually we can take the derivative of them, then what happens when you've got this capital F function that's the quotient of those two. Now, and bear in mind, we've got to be specific. G cannot equal zero. And I think, I hope at this point here that makes sense. Okay? Because anytime G goes to zero, the whole function becomes undefined. Well, this right here, this is the quotient rule. So without trying to develop it for you before I give it to you, here it is. So the derivative of that quotient is going to be the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator multiplied by the numerator now, if you just think about that, uh, if you kind of ignore the denominator right now, what's going on down here, in, in a way that's really similar to the, the product rule where we took the derivative of one function at a time and then add it. Now here, we take the derivative of one function at a time and then subtract. But because we're doing subtraction here, order is important. So it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. And then we've got this weird little term here where we're dividing by the denominator squared. Okay, and I'm going to demonstrate where that comes from in just a moment here. But like I have noted here, and I said just a couple seconds ago here, the order is important. So you're going to have to memorize that. Make sure that you're taking the derivative of the, the factors here in the right order. Now to prove this, what we're going to do here um, is, is something actually really, really neat here. I, I like how this proof runs here. Because I've just shown you prior to this the way the, the product rule works. So what we're going to do is we're going to take f of x, capital F of x, which is equal to f over g, and we're just going to multiply both sides of this equation through by g to get this. Now bear in mind, I am looking to take the derivative of capital F right here. But I've rewritten it as, a, as an expression with a product. So now when I take the derivative, I'm going to take the pro use the product rule and apply it to this one. I love doing that. I love it when you see something like that where you immediately use a tool that you've just looked at to move one step forward. So to take the derivative of the left-hand side, it's the derivative of the one term times the other plus the derivative of that second term times the first. And that's going to equal the derivative of little f right there on the right-hand side. Now, we want to know what the derivative of capital F is. So we're going to isolate for that. So we're going to take this term and move it over to the right-hand side. So we're going to have f of x, sorry, the derivative of f of little f of x minus this term when we bring it over. And then that's going to isolate this term right here. And so what we're going to do is divide by that second uh, factor there, that g of x. And that's why the g of x ends up in the denominator. So now you're, you're sort of seeing the structure of the derivative up here, Okay sort of see the structure here, but it's not quite the same yet. Now, that's because when we have our derivative right now of capital F is a function of capital F. And actually, we don't really want that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the definition of f of x, okay, which is little f over g, and I'm going to substitute that in. And that's going to get me this expression right here. Now I'm really getting close to my, my final destination here. So notice I've got this denominator of g of x here. What I'm going to do and I hope this makes sense. And if it doesn't right off the bat, then I just encourage you to kind of kind of pause the video or, or whatever and just take a few moments and have a good look at it. Just think it through what I'm doing here. I am going to factor out 1 over g of x here out of the numerator, out of the whole numerator. So when I take 1 over g of x out of this term right here, I'm simply going to be left with f of x multiplied by the derivative of g of x. There was no g of x here, but I'm dividing by 1 over g of x. And remember, when you divide this by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. And that's why this becomes f primed of x multiplied by g of x. Okay, so I'm, I'm factoring out, and actually here's, here it is right here. I'm factoring out the 1 over g of x. And factoring out really means divide. So I'm dividing by 1 over g of x. 
And that means multiplying by g of x. That's why that looks like that. And now I've got this g of x in the denominator with another g of x in the denominator. And that's where my g squared of x comes from. So that's, that is the proof of the quotient rule. Hope, I hope that makes sense. I hope in particular the transition from here to here makes sense. If, if it doesn't, again, just take a couple minutes and, and just really think about what I'm doing here, the algebra there. Okay, It is actually relatively straightforward, but I can I understand how people could get lost in that because of the f of x, the g of x, and all that notation there. But now let's take a look at some examples so that you can really illustrate how this works and, and see it in action. Okay, so now let's find the derivative of, and we'll start off with here, uh, y equals x squared plus 1 over y, uh, sorry, over x cubed minus 1. So now to take the derivative, okay, we're going to apply the quotient rule. And remember, the quotient rule says this. We're going to take the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator multiplied by the numerator all over the denominator squared. Oops, squared. And so, and all we got to do is just follow that pattern. So the derivative of the numerator, okay, which is x squared plus 1, that's just going to be 2x. And the denominator is x cubed minus 1. Minus. The derivative of the denominator will be 3x squared multiplied by the numerator. And then all over the denominator squared. Okay. So now... Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to simplify this up as, as much as we can, okay? Now, in the numerator, what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a common x, okay, to both of those terms. That's going to leave me with 2 x cubed minus 1 minus 3x times x squared plus 1 all over x cubed minus 1 squared. Okay, and now uh, when I try to multiply that out, I'm going to get 2x cubed minus 2 minus 3x cubed minus 3x. Okay, that's kind of interesting. All over x squared minus 1 squared. So now we're going to get x, whoops, multiplied by, well, that's going to be negative x cubed minus 3x minus 2 all over x squared minus 1 squared, which finally what we're going to do here is now I'm just going to take out the negative because I think it's going to look better more than anything else if I take out the negative. Negative x, x cubed plus 3x plus 2 all over x squared minus 1 squared. Oh, I'm sorry. I turned that into x squared. That's me not reading my own writing. That's x cubed, x cubed down there. Sorry, that should be x cubed. Yep. Okay. And so there's my answer. Now, I guess ideally if I, if I had more time here, I would really want to investigate to see whether this particular expression right here was factorable. Factor that down and just to see if I can cancel anything with the denominator. At least that would be the pattern that I would that I would normally like to establish for myself. But I simplify this down. I don't see any any quick way of factoring that. I think that's probably as simple as it's going to look. So I'm going to I'm going to end there. Let's take a look at another example. So now let's take a look at it. one more question here. We're going to take a look at uh, taking the square root of root x plus five over root x minus one. So now our derivative, and again, I'm going to do this a little bit quicker here. So f prime g minus g primed f all over g squared. Let's follow that one through there. So the derivative of our numerator here, well, I've got, let's, let's rewrite this in a way that's maybe a little bit more user-friendly. That's going to be x to the 1 half plus 5 all over x to the 1 half minus 1. A little bit easier to take the derivative like that. So f primed is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half Okay, multiplied by the denominator, which is going to be x to the 1 half minus 1, minus the derivative of the denominator will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, multiplied by the numerator, x to the 1 half plus 5, all over, okay, x to the 1 half 
minus 1 squared. Okay, so that is the derivative. Now comes the simplifying part here. So what I'm going to do right now, though, is I notice that I've got this, and I'll change the pen color here. I've noticed I've got this factor common to both, okay, this 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So I'm going to factor that out. 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Now, what that's going to leave me with in each term here is x to the 1 half minus 1 minus... Okay, now that minus that I just said here, that is this one right here, okay, minus, and then I'm going to distribute that negative through the, the last two terms here, so it's going to be x to the 1 half, and then that, that minus right there, remember it gets distributed to that 5, so it'll be minus 5, all over x to the 1 half minus 1 squared. Now, I'm not going to bother squaring that denominator. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, but look in the numerator here. x to the 1 half minus x to the 1 half, okay? Those cancel. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, that, that uh, coefficient out front there. Sorry, the pen's dragging a little bit here. That 2 and that x to the negative 1 half, I'm going to put those both down here. So it's going to be x to the 2x to the 1 half, x to the 1 half minus 1 all squared. That's my denominator. And then in my numerator, I've got negative 1 minus 5, so negative 6. Okay, well, I still have a little bit more simplifying I can do because I've got a negative 6 divided by a coefficient of 2. That's going to leave me with negative 3 over... And now, just to make this thing look a little bit better, I'm going to rewrite those x to the 1 half uh, little terms there as root x. So this will be root x multiplied by the square root of x minus 1 squared. And that's my derivative using the quotient rule.